The moment that I first heard that DDR5 was going to see the light of day with Intel's new platform launch, my first thought was iGPU gaming performance. Because iGPUs do scale quite well with memory bandwidth. So what happens when you throw DDR5 at it? That's what we're going to test in today's video. And Corsair was nice enough to sponsor this video with their super sexy new Dom Platz DDR5, which is the best DDR5. Uh, I can't help but be physically aroused every time I interact with this memory kit. Mmm, tastes like winning. Other than that, Corsair also wanted me to talk about this bad boy, which is the H150i Elite LCD that has an IPS display right on the pump block, super high-tech stuff, and it's just a big 360ml Epine Beast cooler. So we're going to be talking about both these products intermittently over the course of today's video. But with that, let's get into some iGPU gaming. The iGPU that we're going to use for all of these tests is the Intel UHD 770 because, well, it's the only iGPU available at the moment that'll mingle with DDR5, so we don't have much of a choice. Although, I've never gamed using the UHD 770 before, so I am very excited to see how it stacks up. Now, the CPU that the iGPU is going to be attached to for these tests is the i9-12900K, because we just want to be 100% sure that there's going to be no CPU bottleneck. Now, in terms of memory configurations, we're going to test from DDR4 2666 MHz all the way up to DDR5 5200 MHz to see how the UHD 770 scales with additional memory bandwidth available to it. Uh, now, because of how the Z690 platform works, we are going to have to use two different motherboards for the DDR5 and DDR4 test. For the DDR4 tests, I went out and bought a Gigabyte Z690 UDAX DDR4, uh, which on the surface, seems like a very promising budget Z690 board, uh, although I did have some problems with it. It just refused to read NVMe drives out of the box. Uh, I tried various drives and it just wouldn't read them. I ended up fixing this problem by just updating the BIOS, but somebody in Newegg's product review section said that just disabling Intel VMD also fixes the problem. Uh, either way, it was a relatively easy fix. But anyway, so that's the motherboard that we're going to be using there. In terms of the DDR5 setup, I'm going to be using this Asus Z690 Strix board, which I used in a previous video, which was kindly sent over by Micro. Micro Center. Micro Center, the right choice. <laughs> now moving over to the RAM kits that we're going to use for these tests, which is the important part, that's essentially what we're testing. Uh, there is a little bit of a discrepancy in capacity between the DDR4 and the DDR5 kits. I only have one 64 gig kit of DDR4 and it completely refused to tango with that gigabyte board. They must have had a brutal breakup or something because they did not like each other at all. The only speed that I could get to boot was was 2666 megahertz for some reason. Uh, even 2400 wouldn't boot. It's weird that a slower speed wouldn't boot, but but anyway, I, I couldn't get it working. So I ended up having to use a Corsair kit, which worked straight out of the box. The DDR4 kit that we're using is this Vengeance RGB Pro SL kit that can run up to DDR4 3600 megahertz, which is only a 16 gig kit as opposed to the 64 gigs of DDR5 that we're using. But I did test 16 versus 64 gigs with the DDR4 configurations running at 2666 megahertz and well if anything the 16 gig kit was a bit faster so the additional capacity of the DDR5 kit shouldn't affect the test too much but just bear that in mind. Uh, now moving over to the DDR5, we are using the amazing Dom Platz that was sent over by Corsair. It is a 64 gig kit that can run up to 5200 megahertz and you know the, the beautiful RGB illumination on it will give you at least 15% additional performance. Fun fact in terms of this DDR5 Dom Platz kit, this is actually the same RAM kit that Shroud's uncle used to teach him how to play CSGO, so some prestigious stuff right there. And then the final thing in terms of test setup that I want to mention is the cooler, which is going to be the Corsair H150i Elite LCD, which is going to give us some, some freezing cool gaming temperatures. Uh, but anyway, with that, let's see how the, uh, how the UHD 770 stacks up in terms of gaming performance using DDR4 running at 2666 megahertz. 
Okay, so currently this is 1080p uh, with all normal settings, which with GTA 5 is basically low. And wow, this is pretty good. You can see that the CPU is not doing a whole lot. <laughs> There's not much happening, uh, but you'd hope that that's the case with a 12900K. And then the iGPU is is pretty much ooh, is pretty much at 100 percent. This is a good showing, actually. This is this is nice. Hey, would you look at that? Battlefield 5 at 720p low settings is oh tank oh tank. But it's kind of playable. Damn, this new Intel iGPU is uh, does not mess around. So with that, let's have a look at some actual baseline benchmarks. Wow, that is a surprisingly usable gaming result from an Intel iGPU. I'm, I'm really impressed. And that's with the RAM running at 2666 MHz. And aside from GTA 5 weirdly benefiting from having less RAM, the capacity differences had a negligible effect on the gaming performance. So now I'm going to clock it to 3600 MHz. I'm going to be using the same timings as I did with the 2666 configuration, and both of the configurations are also running at gear 1. Going up to 3600 MHz gives us about a 10% performance increase across the board, which is not bad considering that it's, it's just a memory frequency bump. So now we need to drown that little UHD 770 in memory bandwidth using DDR5. Okay, so we've got our Corsair DDR5 in here. I've strapped myself in with a seatbelt for the speeds. Uh, now the kit is currently running at 4400 megahertz, so this isn't its full speed. Uh, we're gonna up that to 5200 megahertz soon. Oh yes, this is some good iGPU performance we've got going here. There is the occasional small dip below 50 frames per second, but yeah, this is good. This is good. So let's look at some benchmarks. Okay, not a massive difference, but it is running at 4400 MHz here, so let's crank it up to 5200 MHz and see if that helps. Oof, oh yeah, it's a little bit embarrassing. DDR5 didn't make a huge difference in terms of performance here, uh, but I think there are a couple of good reasons for that. The first one is for the DDR4 configurations, I could easily run even the faster speed kit in first gear in gear one, which is the lowest latency configuration you can run your RAM in. Whereas DDR5, I could only get running with gear two, regardless of the, the memory speed that I was running. Uh, so that additional latency seems to negate the additional memory bandwidth that we get from the higher speed RAM. So I think that's the first reason we didn't see a huge difference. And I think the second reason we didn't see a huge difference is that even with the fast DDR4, the iGPU's memory bandwidth need is kind of saturated. That's not the bottleneck anymore. That's not the reason why it's not performing better anymore. And I think that's why going from 4400 megahertz to 5200 megahertz, the, the results were pretty much within the margin of error. So I think what's gonna happen is when we get higher performance iGPUs, something like RDNA 2 based iGPUs from AMD, uh, we may actually see a bigger performance difference going from slower DDR for to like high speed DDR5, you know, if if those architectures need more memory bandwidth for their performance. But at this point, that's just a guess, right? I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Uh, but yeah, an interesting result. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you Corsair for sponsoring this video. That's very awesome of you sending over huge amounts of DDR5 and stuff for this video. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. And until the next video, like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye bye.